Hi there, Sandy McIver here, and today I have a new Distressed Oxide color combo for you, along with two quick and easy cards. Aren't they pretty? For the embossed resist background, I'll be using the Thank You background and the Cosmos background stamps from Simon Says Stamps. These are foam and rubber stamps, and they're 6 by 6 I'm using my Misty stamping tool today, and due to the thickness of the stamps, I'm going to remove the grid paper and the foam base to make it easier for my Misty to close on my thick stamp. There are many ways to stamp with these large rubber images, and here's one I find works for me. I put a bit of adhesive on the back of my cardstock. I lay it down on the portion of the stamp that I want to stamp, close my Misty lid and press, and that attaches my cardstock to the lid of the Misty. So now I'm using my anti-static tool to get rid of any sticky fingerprints, etc. I may have on there. I'm inking up my stamp with my Versamark ink, and I'm making sure that it's good and juicy all over. And I'm going to close the lid of my Misty, use a Kleenex to give a real good rub all over the entire surface, and then you can gently lift it off of the lid of your Misty, add your white embossing powder over the entire surface, and then you're going to heat set it. Next comes the fun part. We are working with Barn Door Ripe Persimmon and Fossilized Amber. And I'm starting obviously with the Fossilized Amber using some blending brushes. And I'm adding my ink in a circular motion. And I'm not worrying too much about it being even or anything at this point in time because I like to go back over it twice. So I'm just pulling down the color. I like to work from my right side to my left. That's why I turn the paper around. I also have very warm hands that leave fingerprints all over the Distressed Oxide ink. So I'm using a Kleenex to hold it on to my paper so that I don't get fingerprints all over it. So here I'm starting with the second set of colors. I've already put a second coat of red down back to the orange and then back to the yellow. And then once you're finished doing this, you want to rub it with your paper towel and that will eliminate any ink sitting on top of your embossing. It's fun to change up the ink a bit too. Here I did one panel going each way. On the left we've got the red at the top and on the right we've got the red at the bottom or that one's interchangeable. The dies I'm using today are from Simon Says Stamps. Let's start with the Cosmo stem. It coordinates with my Cosmo background. The poppy stem is similar in size and complements the Cosmos. And the new to Simon this month, A2 Scalloped Rectangles. There are four dies in this set and I'm going to be using the second from largest because the large one is a little bit bigger than my actual card. So I'm going to be die cutting these. I'm going to use some tape to hold it in place. Just adding a couple of pieces. I'm going to zoom in here for you so we can get up close and personal. And I like to use a couple of pieces. Uh, one hint, make sure that your ink is dry, otherwise the tape isn't going to stick. And you want to center it so that you've got an equal amount of the three colors that you added to the piece for your die cutting and then just run it through your machine. So here I have both of them done and I'm ready to start die cutting my flowers. For the Cosmo card, I used three of the Cosmo stem dies, and then for the thank you card, I used one of the Cosmo in the center, and then I surrounded it with a poppy die on either side. For my card base, it's four and a quarter by 11, scored and folded at five and a half, which is an A2 size, and I'm using adhesive to attach my distressed oxide pieces to the center front of the top folding card just like that. Then I'm going to use little pieces of foam tape on the back of all my flowers and I'm going to mount them to the front of my cards. For the sentiments, I'm using a new set of sentiment strips called Thanks from Simon Says Stamps. And these are printed and all you have to do is run them through your cutter and slice them apart. And then I just trim the ends with a pair of scissors. And I love these. They're so quick and easy for cards and you get a whole bunch of sentiments without having to buy all the stamps. So there you go. Here's my finished cards. I hope you enjoyed today's little lesson on the distressed oxides and making simple cards. I have listed all the supplies today underneath this video and there's also a link to my blog where you can get them as well as the pdf and thanks so much for stopping in until next time toodles